This LOS is calculate and interpret the value, price return, and total return of an index. Index definition and calculations of value and returns. A security market index represents a given security market, market segment, or asset class. Most indices are constructed as portfolios of marketable securities. Price return index only reflects changes in market prices of constituent securities. The value of a price return index is calculated as the following. So here we have the, the uh, formula, the value of a price return index. In the numerator, we can see it's the sum. Uh, uh, NI is the number of units of constituent securities held in the index portfolio. And PI is the unit price of the constituent security. And D equals the value of the divisor. The divisor is a number initially chosen at inception. It is frequently chosen so that the price index has a convenient initial value such as 1000. For a security market index, price return can be calculated in two ways. Either the percentage change in value of the price return index or the weighted average of price returns of the constituent securities. That's fairly important to understand, but you'll have a better understanding of that as we go through uh, uh, quite a few calculations with regards to this through not only this, but uh, some following LOS as well. I've always found that the best way to understand these uh, calculations with regards to the indices is to just jump in and do a bunch of calculations and then it becomes quite clear what's happening. So let's look at this practice question. An analyst gathers the following information for a price weighted index comprised of securities ABC, DEF, and GHI. So we have the beginning of period price, the end of period price, and the total dividends, okay? So ABC has a beginning per, uh, period price of 25, ending period 27, dividend of one. DEF, beginning uh, period price, 35 pounds, end of period price, 25 pounds, and total dividends of uh, uh, one pound 50. And GHI, beginning price, 15 pounds, ending price 16, total dividends of one pound. So the question is asking for the price return uh, of the index. Is it A, negative 4.6%, B, negative 9.3%, or C, negative 13.9%. Okay, I realize we're tackling some questions fairly early in this process with regards to these LOS. And later on, there's another LOS, which is calculate and analyze the value and return of an index given its weighting method, so we're going to see more. But nevertheless, I wanted to put this uh, up front right away to show you the importance of how uh, it's, very, it's really important uh, in reading these questions. Because in this case, it's saying it is a price weighted index and we're being asked to calculate the price uh, return. So it's really important when we're doing our calculations that we're reading the questions carefully and we're seeing uh, what the method is for calculating uh, the index, okay? So we can see in this case, when it's a price weighted index and we're calculating the price return, it's fairly simple. Uh, we don't need the dividends at all in this case, so that's there as red herring information. We would need that if we were calculating the total return, but in this case, it's a price weighted index and we're calculating the price uh, return. So all we need to do is we add up the beginning price, and here I've put it in bold and green. Uh, there's three securities, one, two, three. We add up the uh, prices and sum them. That's with regards to the formula. We have a sum of 75. We have the ending period price of 68, so to, to calculate the return, it's just 68 minus 75 divided by 75 minus 9.33%. So the correct answer is B, okay? Quickly, uh, we can also, uh, I know some folks like to calculate it as just uh, 68 divided by 75 minus one times 100, and we're gonna get the negative 9.33, okay? Okay, as I said, this is a little bit early in the process to be doing these type of calculations, but I just wanted to stress very early as you get into the reading and uh, into the LOS for this section that it's just the importance of reading the question and seeing what we're doing here. Because in this next question, an analyst is gathering the following information, but it's for an equal weighted index uh, comprised of assets A, B, and C. And again, it's calculating for the, uh, the price return, okay? So again, they're giving us uh, uh, the beginning uh, period price, the ending period price, and the total dividends. And you can see for uh, A, the beginning price is 10 euros, ending price uh, 12 euros, 
total dividends uh, 0 0.75. B, uh, the beginning price 20 euros, ending of period price 19 euros, total dividends of uh, 1 euro. And for C, the beginning price 30 euros, ending price 30 euros, and the total dividends is uh, 2 euros. So the price return of the index is A, 1.7%, B, 5%, or C, 11.4%. Okay, you can see in this case that they're giving the information with regards to an equal weighted index. It's not a price weighted index, okay? And so the answer, the correct answer is B, it's 5%. And I want to show you that a lot of people, if they don't read the question carefully, this is why I'm putting this up front with regards to this reading in these LOSs. If you just looked at the beginning prices and ending prices, I don't even really need my calculator here, 30 plus 20, 50, that's 60, okay? And here I have my ending prices, 30 plus 19 plus 12, just bring up the calculator very quickly. I can do 30 plus 19 plus 12, and that's going to give us 61, okay? And if I was calculating as the price return uh, for a price weighted, as I did in the previous question, I would do 61 divided by 60, okay? Minus 1, and then times by the 100. And you can see indeed, aha, I would answer A. But A is not correct. It's not correct. Why? And this is why I put this early. You need to read the question very carefully. This is an equal weighted index. So the price can be calculated as the weighted average of the price returns of the constituent securities, okay? Again, in this case, it's asking for the price return, so we don't need the dividends. That is given there as a um, red herring information. But what I do need to do is I need to calculate the returns of each of the securities, uh, price returns. So you can see for A, 12 divided by 10, uh, minus one times 100, or this way, 12 minus 10 divided by 10, uh, ending minus beginning divided by beginning, we're gonna get 20% here, okay? That's the return on A. For B, the return is 19 minus 20 divided by 20, that's a minus 5%, okay? And finally, for C, uh, there's no return, okay? 30 minus 30 divided by 30 is zero. So what we needed to do then is we're gonna add these up, and you can see we're gonna have 15%, okay? And we're going to divide by 3 because it's equally weighted, and we're going to get 5%. So the price return index assigns a weight of one-third to each asset because it's equally weighted. Therefore, the price return is one-third times 20% minus 5% plus zero. Okay? So I put those two questions uh, very early in the process. Uh, don't worry, there's going to be lots more practice, but I just wanted to show very quickly and very early the real importance of uh, reading these questions very carefully. So continuing with index definition and calculations of value and returns, now we're gonna look at total return. Total return measures price appreciation plus interest, dividends, and other distributions. Thus, the total return of an index is the price appreciation or change in the value of price return index plus income, which is dividends and or interest over the period, expressed as a percentage of the beginning value of the price return index. So here we can see we've got the formula, the total return, and this is uh, easy. By the end of the CFA level one, you really know it's ending minus beginning plus the income divided by the beginning, okay? So there's no worries on calculating the total return. And the total return of an index can also be calculated as the weighted average of the total returns of the constituent securities. That's important to know. And the calculation of index values over multiple time periods requires geometrically linking the series of the index returns, okay? So if I have here the uh, value of the index uh, at, uh, at, at the beginning period, um, I'm, for the ending period, I'm just gonna be multiplying the value of the beginning uh, times one plus, uh, one plus the period return, times one plus the period return, and uh, you know, if it was for three periods, uh, one plus the period return. And we've studied that in the quants before, how we calculate the uh, geometric returns. So I'm just jumping into the ebook here very quickly. I just wanna show you the calculation of index values over multiple time periods, because my handwriting was not so clear on that previous slide, perhaps. Just wanna show you the calculation of index values over multiple time periods 
requires geometrically linking the series of index returns. We've studied this before in the quant. That's why we do it as a foundation. And then it comes up in terms of uh, different applications, and this is one of them. Okay, so I just wanted to spend a quick second because this is, uh, you know, it could very easily get a question that given the uh, level of the index at the beginning and a series of returns, calculate the value of the index at the uh, end of the period, okay? So you can see there's the uh, formula which, we, which I had talked about. And you can see that uh, this is the value of the price return at index at given time t, which would be the ending. And it's the, uh, uh, the value of the price return index at the inception times one plus the period return. So it just gives another, a little example here. You can see at time zero, the index is at uh, 1,000. Okay, so of course uh, we're starting with 1,000. And then I have a 5% return in period one and a 3% return in period two. So this is just to get to the ending value, this is really easy. You just start with your beginning 1,000 and it's gonna be times 1.05 times 1.03 and we're gonna have an ending value of 1,081.5. Okay, so that's really easy. And uh, we see lots of practice questions where you need to use that formula. Just gonna finish this LOS with uh, one last practice question, but now we're gonna look at the calculation for the total return. So again, this is giving us the same data as the previous question, and analyst gathers the following information for an equal weighted uh, index comprised of A, B, and C. So we've got the beginning prices, the ending prices, and the total dividends. In this case, it's asking for the total return of the index. So again, we're gonna need those dividends this time. And uh, the total return of the index is A, 5%, B, 7.9%, or C, 11.4%. Okay, this is a nice little practice question to end on. So again, it was asking for the equal weighted index. So step one, we're gonna calculate the returns, uh, total returns for each, which you can see is ending minus beginning plus the uh, dividends divided by the beginning. Uh, so we should know that. This is ending minus beginning plus the dividends divided by the beginning, okay, uh, for each one. And uh, so we calculate for A, the return, total return is 27.5%. For B, the total return is 0%. And for C, the total return is 6.7%. So then again, an equal weighted index applies the same weight, one third to each security's returns. Therefore, the total return, we're gonna add the three together, 27.5 plus zero plus 6.7, and divide by three, we're gonna get 11.4%. So the correct answer is C, okay? Nice little question to end this LOS on. Uh, don't worry, we're gonna be doing lots more calculations later with another LOS in terms of calculating uh, returns of, diff uh, given the uh, weighting of, a, uh, of an index, calculating the returns. And that's the last slide for this LOS, thank you.